And here we go. Moving into the neutrals, guys. We're almost done. First up, we have... The only textless card in the game. Or in the set. This is Arcane, Arcane Servant. Arcane Servant. He is a 2-mana two 2-3 two, elemental. Decent stat line. No text. He's a dude. Awesome card art. River Crocolisk, except an elemental. I don't know. How do you rate this? Three. Six, because, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, it's just a regular, it's a card. Like, it, yeah. it doesn't do anything. It's yeah. just. If you need the elemental tag, it's a seven. Otherwise, <laughs> you're otherwise, just never going to put this in your deck. No, you're, you're never going to put it in your deck. Um, yeah, this fits perfectly in my rogue deck. Oh, wait, no. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I mean, you could make it work in a rogue deck, but rogue's the only class. Deep right. Um, <sighs> deep right. Yeah, uh, in, in a vacuum, it's it's what a, uh, a four. It's playable. I don't know. I would it's playable. It's, it's playable. Yeah. There you go. It's There's playable. Nothing to discuss. Next. Next. <laughs> uh, Toxfin is a one mana one two Murloc. It has battle cry. Give a friendly Murloc poisonous. This is an interesting card to me because most of the time when you give something poisonous, you ha you are you have to take some sort of penalty. We look at Toxic Arrow as one example. It's deal two damage to a minion. If it's still alive, give it poisonous. Now this is a card that's clearly meant to be used on your own minions. So it costs two mana, and you have to deal two damage to your own, to your own minion. So. Or, you know, kill one of their small dudes, but you're never using it for that anyway. Mm -hmm. So this seems to be, this seems to compare with Toxic Air, which is a class card, favorably. That, and it's a one mana Murloc with two health, which is a huge deal. Oh, yeah. We now, we now have two decent one drop Murlocs. That two health means so <clears throat> much. Yes. This is a good card. This yep. card is one of the best enablers for the Murloc archetype in the current set. I I'm very high on this card. Me too. Um, I, I mean, you stole my thunder. I, I said I hinted earlier that um, Murlocs were going to be a thing again, um, and that uh, they were going to work not just in Shaman. They were going to work in. We're going to see Murloc, Warlock, Murloc Mage, Murloc Paladin. They're they're all going to be they're all going to be experimented with, and this card is one of the reasons why it's going to work because this is going to stick around. You're not always going to use this to put poisonous on something. Sometimes you just use this to buff with some other card or to be your turn one Murloc play. It's a great card. I, I think um, in the in, in the Murloc decks that we're going to see, this is a easy six and a half for me. This is a, this is a linchpin. This is literally a linchpin. If this card pans out to be not, pans out to be bad, then it's not worth playing Murlocs. Right. So this card, this card is irreplaceable. This is like, how do I rate it? Because it's so situational at the same time. So overall, overall, overall is a card. Uh, you're not going to put it in anything but Murloc decks. And in the Murloc decks, it's going to be an eight. Like that's fair. That's fair. See, I, I rated it a six and a half, but I, th I was rating it overall. Overall, if I'm yeah. if I'm talking just. If I'm talking just Murlocs, yeah, it's like a seven and a half or an eight for sure. But I just rated it well, overall. So there's literally like I don't. This card makes Murloc decks viable. Yeah. It really yeah, does. Yeah, it's just it's so good. Yeah. This one health, guys. Sometimes the difference between like broken sometimes we we said this earlier. Sometimes the difference between a broken card and a, a terrible card is one mana. Well, mm -hmm. when you're talking about one mana cards, the difference between a broken and a good card is one health. The difference between dire mole and all the other one mana one twos you never hear played of is one health. Yeah. Yeah. Next we have uh, what I think is an interesting card, a one mana, one one potion vendor with battle cry, restore two health to all friendly minions. Um, great synergy in priest for drawn cards. Um, works well in um, aggro decks if you need to trade. To, to, it's very situational. It's a it's it's a card in in certain decks where it's gonna it's gonna be real good. Um, uh, if Heal Zoo was still a thing, this would see play in that. Um, it's gonna it's gonna have some value in Priest and a couple of mid range decks that are gonna want just a little bit of health, healing. But overall, it's it's not gonna see a whole lot of play. I, I like the card; it's cool. I love the fact that it's a one a one mana one one that could potentially heal for sixteen health. <laughs> um, but that's that's kind of a best case scenario. Overall, I give this like a four and a half. 
as I'm going to Q-snipe you with my rogue deck that runs a potion vendor and togwaggle scheme. And I'm just going to togwaggle scheme potion vendor and play it turn after turn after turn after turn after turn. And then when you think I'm out of them, I'm going to pick them all up and do it again. This card's okay. This, it's, it's like a four, four and a half, five. Like yeah. you, can, you can find some niche uses for it, but overall it's not good. You're not going to want to trade with the decks that want to play a one mana, one, one, uh, restore two. You'd rather play the five mana, four, five, restore two. Yep. Um, this might could do something in Zoo maybe, uh, but like I, I think Heal Zoo is going to really, I don't, I don't believe in Heal Zoo surviving the, oh, surviving yeah. the meta shift. So. No, I don't either. I don't either. But, you know, it's something I wanted to mention just because it, you know, it, it could happen. It could be a thing. Yeah, no, absolutely. Just uh, Dalaran, a Dalaran Librarian is a two mana, two three silence adjacent mi minions. We've seen friendly silence effects in the in the past. We've seen friendly silence effects in the past, and they've always been kind of a purify. I mean, a meme, right? right. They've always just been bad. This one, however, has a legitimate opportunity to be good. Why was Purify bad? Because it was two mana, silence a friendly minion, draw a card. As can you tell me if can you tell me if drawing a card is better than having a two three on the board? Or um, no, obviously, no. Nope. Exactly. Having a, having a two three on the board is way better. So good, and you play it on curve. Yep, and and it just contests everything. And think about some of the, we're going to talk about some minions that just neutral minions that this synergizes with, right? We're going to see those in a minute, but class minions that this synergizes with priest. Mm -hmm. I mean that four, remember that four mana four, seven. Oh yeah. Pop this oh, bad yeah. boy in there. Um, some of the classic ones, the, um, that this was featured in the silence priest deck. Think about your, um, your ancient watchers and that, um, that, uh, was it the four mana four, eight, Finey thing, for example, there are, there are decks that this there are cards in the meta right now that this thing synergizes with, um, and if nothing else, it's just a two mana two three. It's a viable stat line, um, but as you're going to see, there there are cards even outside of priest that this deck is that this is going to synergize with. Yeah. I think this is uh, going to be a quietly viable card. This is going to be like a silence version of like. Sun Fury Protector. It's gonna be it's gonna be played in a uh, in a few decks um, to to enable or to silence those those the means that we're gonna see. I don't want to I don't want to give too much weight, but you're you're gonna see this card. This card's gonna be around. I, I give this card a five. Yeah, this is this is a solid five. Good body. You can you can handle this one. I know you like this boy. I love this card. Have you? Okay. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. This is a two mana, two one beast named Henchclan Hogsteed. It has Rush and it reads Death Rattle. Summon a one one Murloc. So you get to play this. Like it's so flavorful. I love the art on this card. The art doesn't fit anywhere. It was like they. It was like they commissioned a seven year old to draw a, a frog on top of a pig, and this is what he came up with. And they call it Hench Clan Hogsteed. Like I imagine when I when I see this card and I imagine it being played, you're drop you're dropping it. Or oh, excuse me, uh, my my thing's just anyway. Uh, so so you drop it as a minion. Imagine it's actually summoned. It runs into the enemy Lich King or whatever, right? The board just kind of disintegrates. But since the Murloc is hanging off on the back, it just kind of flips back over onto your battlefield in your front lines. As a result of the impact, so it's super cool, flavorfully. Like in the way my mind imagines the narrative, is super cool. It fits into a lot of beast decks. There's much mad synergy with uh, Untamed Beastmaster. We talk about all the Murloc synergy. It's going to fit in with that because this is effectively going to work as a uh, cheap removal spell that leaves a one-one Murloc behind. So you'll still be able to uh, use those those synergies. And just in general, any any aggro or tempo strategy will be able to slot this card in because. Like I said, it's a two, it's two, a two damage ping with a like with a one one attached. It's strong. They found a way to make the um, two mana two one charge Murloc better without making a better Murloc. True. Yeah, I didn't even think about it that way. I like its I like its uh, interaction with Hungry Crab in particular. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you talked about that a little earlier. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's really cool as well. Um, yeah, it, and again, because it actually because of how it works with with the hungry crab, it fits in both beast and murloc decks. Mm 
mm-hmm. which is really kind of clever. And this is another one of those, those cards that rewards that kind of like good game presence, good deck building sense, um, good overall knowledge of how cards interact and how synergies can work in a deck. This is a, a card that rewards just being knowledgeable about the game. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't have to have everything spoon fed to you. You can have an opportunity to actually come up with and create some cool opportunities. So, what yeah. do you think about this card? Honestly, this is this card's really good. This is a seven and a half. This is a really good card. I would be surprised if it's not in a grip of meta decks. Yeah, um, because it has that beast tag on it and that rush tag on it, and it leaves a body behind. This is going to be in every single aggro deck, and aggro is going to be everywhere this is going to be in every mid-range hunter list and and mid-range hunters are going to be everywhere this is at least early in the meta and probably for the entire set um this is this is easily going to be uh, a high-end card i had it in eight i'm not surprised we were close on this one just because mid-range hunter and warlock and and murloc zoo decks are going to exist in multiple forms this is going to be a get used to this card guys whatever sound this makes when it comes on the board we're going to all be hearing it in our sleep next we have an interesting card a two mana zero six elemental mana reservoir with the text spell damage plus one this is another card that um is kind of playing into they put a lot more cards in now that that add spell damage um, a, lot, a lot of class cards, a lot of uh, weapons, or at least a weapon now that does it. Um, it's an interesting card in that it, it pushes that, that archetype of dealing spell damage. I don't think it has a place in, um, in Mage, but I could see this card being played in something like Spell Hunter, or Spell Damage Hunter. Um, because it has that zero six body, that that big old booty on it, it's gonna stick yeah. around for a minute. Um, you don't want to kill it. No, no. And I would think, yeah, you don't want to kill it, but you're gonna feel real bad when you don't kill it, and they, they use that spell damage to hurt your face. And because it's got a zero six butt on it, it's gonna disincentivize you from wanting to kill it. And like, um, because I mean, what are you gonna do? You want to spend it like a, a high attack spell or high attack minion on it because that's something that could go face or trade something more valuable. So it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, you want it to die, but you don't want to commit anything to it. So it's like, it's this really kind of weird niche that it fits into. Um, and I could see it as a one of in, in, and like I said, um, spell damage hunter, I could see it as, uh, it played in, um, um, a couple of other classes too, but that's the one that plays the most in my mind is something like spell hunter, um, spell damage hunter. Um, but I like the card design a lot. I think it's a really cool card and it's nice to see them taking some creative liberties with, with coming up with new card designs. You're a very positive person. Yep. The card's bad. Oh yeah. Two out of 10. Sure. It's bad, <laughs> but I, I see it having a place. Um, just yeah. because I like it doesn't mean I'm high on it. It's a four. It's a four to me because it's going to see some experimentation. It's going to see some play. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it is a very cool design. I do want to give you credit there. I do want to give you a lot of credit there, but yeah, it's, I don't know, man. Sun Reaver Spy. It's a two mana, two, three. This is Battle Cry. If you control a secret, gain plus one plus one. This is a super powerful card. We've seen this effect before in the past on a mage, on a mage specific card that I totally remember the name of, and I'm just refusing to tell you guys. Uh, but this is going to go well in this is going to go well in that secret paladin deck that we all hate. Um, like I said, next set they promised us to print mysterious challengers so we can stop hitting rogue and hate paladin instead. <laughs> and and this will go well in uh, in mage. I actually don't see it fitting in hunter because it competes with the hunter secret slots. Yeah. So I don't see this in hunter either. Um, I see this. I agree with you. I see this more in in secret mage than I do in see it in secret paladin because I think secret paladin. Um, wants to play something more like the um, secret keeper i think they would rather sure. play that than this um but i'm sure that people will experiment within that i just don't think it's going to be the optimal choice i could be wrong because it will be a, a two mana two three or three uh three four but um the, the biggest thing i think is that paladin secrets are too easy to trigger so mm. I th- mage secrets tend to stick around a little longer is why I think it just won't. But even still, even still, it's still two minute, two, three, which isn't terrible. So it'll probably get played anyway. Um, I think overall it's, it's an okay card with, with upside. I actually think it's pretty good. Um, I, 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 I give this card for what it is. I give it a five and a half. Yeah, I got five on it. Yeah. 
Next, we have the... Uh, uh, these cards are all statted really well so far. We haven't yeah, seen any I love it. Like bonkers. I love this card a lot. I'm actually really excited about this. And the card art on this is really sweet, too. This guy's, this guy's look is freaking on point. Uh, this yeah, is a dude. two mana, three, two, spell book binder. Battle cry, if you have spell damage, draw a card. Again, another thing that to me says, it, um, this is Temple Mage an aggro mage and and a little bit of potential for um spell damage hunter uh but i think this slots right into um that two mana slot on a um uh, on a um, tempo or uh aggro mage that has any kind of spell damage in it at all because it does the things that they want to do it rewards you for having spell damage and it helps you cycle cards which they need so uh I, i'm really i'm really a fan of this card yeah, I'm, I'm actually much less a fan of it. Well, with all the three mana, with all the two mana two threes, I feel like this card becomes a little uh, this card becomes a little worse because you because it's a three two, you have to play it on turn two to get any value. Otherwise, it's going to end up just trading down or becoming collateral damage and just getting value traded against. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas a two three uh, retains value all the way up until turn four. Sure. So I it just in general a little lower on the three two <clears throat> stat line unless there are um, one threes in particular we need to kill which. Don't really exist in the meta uh, except for Norse or Cleric, which is going to be prevalent because Priest is going to be an insane, insane uh, class. But in that case, or insane, yeah, insane class. But in that case, you're never going to get the um, the battle cry off on Spellbook Finder. I, you're right when you say Temple Mage is the one place that, or is the place that'll fit best. And I think, in my opinion, that's the only place it'll fit overall as a card. I have to rate, I have to rate it as a as a four and a half out of ten. Because it, as much as it's just an okay two drop, it's not good, it's not bad, it's just okay. See, and I agree with what you said largely, but I do want to point out that this is a card that if you have it in on turn two, you're not waiting to play it for the card draw. You're playing it on two, oh, yeah, turn exactly. two for, for the curve. But if you if you draw this on turn five and you have spell damage out, then you play this with upside. No, oh, it's kind of it's. I would rather, for example, I would rather draw this on turn five or six with a mage than than um sorcerer's apprentice yeah no, just, for sure just because you can get that upside of of, of drawing a card so um so it, it situationally um uh, has has some, a little bit upside i'm a little higher on it than you um because of that i'm at a four and a half with it mm -hmm. yeah four and a half i had to double check <laughs> make sure you're talking about the right card uh next we have another card i think you liked as i recall I do. I do like Evil Cable Rat. This is the this is the first real evil card that I've liked. Uh, so Evil Cable Rat is a two two mana neutral one one beast that reads Battle Cry. Add a lackey to your hand. So we've already discussed the lackeys and their value. So we know how powerful they are. This doesn't have any conditions attached to it. It just says play this bad beast. Get a non bad card. <laughs> But Where it's neutral, fits. so it gives it gives it gives cards. Or, uh, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. Go ahead. <clears throat> no, 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 go for it. You're not stealing any thunder. I was gonna say it gives cards that or classes that don't otherwise have access to lackey cards. Lackey cards. Yeah, exactly. And th on top of it being a beast, it really opens up because it really opens up the door to beast decks because we're already so close with the neutral with the neutral cards we have. Just untamed beastmaster is close enough to making. Beast decks work because of a handful of beasts. It's just it, that's such a powerful card if you can right. mix with any effects. Right. I think that this this card in particular slots very well into hunter decks with Master's Call. I particularly like it in Mechathune Hunter. I think I think it'll never fit into a mid range hunter, but once you start talking about value hunter decks, I think that it goes in because you'll be able to Master's Call and make your opponent cry. I I don't need I don't even need to write a narrative for that. You guys can write it in your own head. You probably are already shaking with the PTSD from what you just played last night. You know, so, like, Evil Cable Rat's okay. I don't generally like 1-1s, one but with the Lackey and with all the vision and with my optimism, I got I, I to sit at 5.5 with it myself. Uh, Gnomish Apprentice sees play. Sure. <laughs> and, and the Lackeys, you know, um, are, even though you're not drawing a card, you're not cycling through your deck, um, you are generating a pretty powerful card. Um, and they're comparable, plus you have the beast tag on it, and you get the added bonus of the fact that the lackey card is going to be more powerful than average. So overall, I like the card. Um, what do you give it for rating? I think I said five and a half. I, I couldn't. If I didn't. I couldn't. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't hear you when you said it. Um, I'm at a five with this card. I, I think it, it it's a card that looks a lot better than it is, but outside of like beast decks, it's probably not going to see a lot of play. 
Wait, is that a is that a rat on top of the rat's head? Yes, that's a rat right there. There's a rat like right pulling there. the rat by cheese. Yeah, there's oh a rat God. right there, and then there's yeah, th yes. <laughs> that's sick. Okay. Heck yes, golden craft on day one. The next card is uh, is called Hench Clan Sneak. I'm glad we're getting the Hench Clans in. Heck yeah. uh, too bad they gave us a broken one first. Uh, this one is uh, three mana three three with stealth, no other text on it. So stealth is a pretty a pretty good mechanic that we've um, that we've seen throughout Hearthstone and has never been able to be balanced well. It's always been oh my god, this card is crazy and it needs to be removed from the game, or and it might be okay in Arena. So uh, this, to me, fits in the second category a lot better. Uh, how do you feel about it? Um, I, th I think you know, hit the nail on the head. I think this card looks cool because it's a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with stealth. We don't see stealth a lot. And we, people's instinct when they see stealth is, oh, that's really strong. To me, this is an Arena card. Yeah. I just, just, And it's not because the card is per se, per se weak. I just think it's got a lot of competition with a lot more powerful cards that are going to bump it out of the way. Yep. I, I got the set of I got the set of four. Yeah, um, that's. I'm at a three and a half because it's only going to see play in arena. So, Fair enough. Yeah. Um, next we have Flight Master, three mana, three four, passes the vanilla stat test. Uh, Battle Cry, summon a two two Griffin for each player. I actually like this card. Um, you're not going to play it. You're not going to play it because there's uh, there's better three mana three fours right now. You don't need that many three mana three fours. Um, it's going to be good in arena um, because summoning a two two Griffin for them doesn't matter because you're going to summon it at a time when you can kill their two two, and then you're just going to have a three mana three four and a two two, which means you're getting a three mana five six worth of stats, which is good, even though it's over two buy two buys, which is not so good, but still. Um, uh, but as far as constructed goes. There are better three mana three fours to play with less downside. Meh. Yeah. Three out of three out of ten. Uh, you you said more than I would have said about it. Three. It's it's a three and a half for me because it will see play in arena, but it won't see play in constructed. Faceless Rager is the next card, and don't we all love our Ragers? This one is a three mana five one because why wouldn't it be? It says Battle Cry, copy of friendly minions health. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rager. We gotta have a rager. Yeah, I know, I know. But so, copy of friendly minions health is that's interesting. This is probably good. Yeah. Or bad. This is. I this don't is, know. This is the second best rager ever printed, in my opinion. Next to the next to the, magma. Next to the steel rager or whatever. No, oh, steel rager. The four mana five one rush. Yes. Win a win a game of arena. Yes. Is battle cry. Yes. Uh, I because yeah, this I, this to me this to me is like. A faceless rager version of uh, Twilight Drake with a better attack for less mana. If you play so this, so you only need three health. Yeah, yeah. This is actually a really good card. This is actually a really good card. If you play yeah, this with all the two mana two threes. No, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, if you play this on like, if you top deck this on like turn six and you've got like a six health minion, this card is bonkers. You get a five mana five six for three mana, right? You know, and if you play this just on curve, and you've got a, th uh, a, a three mana three, uh, or a two mana two three that you just played, this is a bonkers card. It's a five mana five three, a three mana five three. Yeah, this mm -hmm. is actually a, a this is a a sneaky is good card if you if you yeah. can if you can think about it. Is it good enough for constructed? I think it'll see play in like like hand lock or like 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 decks that have big budded minions in them but i think overall it's not going to be it's not going to be good this could actually see play in aggro decks i take that back this could be played in aggro decks because it's going to trade up and up and up or it's just mm -hmm. going to do a lot of damage to the face yeah i think this is going to find a place i'm not sure exactly where i think uh if, most likely the aggro tempo but oh yeah if cards like if cards like void ripper and um oh what's the other one that's really wonky at um three mana there's some there's some interesting cards that have made aggro and tempo lists at three at the three mana slot. If those can make it, this can absolutely make it because that that five attack is is really potent. I'm hitting them with that six. I had this at a five and a half. Yeah, so I'm right there with you. Um, next to card is traveling healer. This is a four mana three two with divine shield. It reads battle cry restore three health. 
I like this card a lot. I, I mean, it, it's just, it's a turtle, dude. It's a turtle with divine shield. And a it's, ninja mask on. Uh, true. It's, it's, it's actual name is Raphael. Nice. I got you. Um, but yeah, I don't know. There's not a whole lot to say about it. As much as there's a lot of text and a lot going on with this card, it's understated, overbubbled. Like we compare it to the four mana three three divine shield, uh, with that has no other text on it, and it, it compares favorably from there. That card sees play in arena and has seen play and constructed in the distant past. Um, I think that this card is nearly good enough to see play. I don't know. Can we put a four point five on this? You and I are in the same wavelength here. Wave wavelength here. I thought for a moment there you were going to go lower, and then you came back up a little bit. I'm actually optimistic about this card, not just for arena. Ooh. I think this card is going to be solid in arena, but that battle cry restore three health plus the divine shield means it's going to trade probably two to one, and it's going to heal you in the process. It's almost good enough to be. Like you said, almost good enough to be a solid, a legitimate contender for uh, construct regular constructed play. It's going to see niche constructed play. It's just going to. Oh, for sure. It's going to see it. And because of that, I'm actually a little higher on it than I would be. And, you know, my normal threshold for, for going to see plays is around three and a half, four. But because it's it's just a little bit better than that, I'm at a four and a half as well. We're in the same wavelength here. But this card, I think, is one of the cards that's going to be. It's not going to be sneaky good like the Rager we just looked at, but it's oh, going to yeah. be. It's going to be it's going to make its way into into the meta when people realize that this is actually a pretty good card. Okay. Next we have the Dalaran Crusader. Five mana, five, four with Divine Shield. Here's another card that, I, A, I think is going to be good in Arena. Um, but, I I mean, it's a five mana, five, four. The, the five mana, four, four is okay. A five mana, five, five is standard. But that Divine Shield is like, what is that worth? Like three, three health? It's like sixty percent health, something like that. Uh, like one, like. Well, think of how important that divine shield is on the one mana one one taunt from Paladin. Mm -hmm. How how insane is that divine shield? That divine shield eats like thirty seven damage. <laughs> right. Yeah, I I think that this is a really I think this is a really really good card in arena, um, very solid at least uh, with 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 upside um i think there is there are potential decks where this could be plugged into in no actually probably not in constructed because zilliax exists and but, also just doesn't do anything yeah and it just it doesn't but in arena this is real solid it, mm -hmm. i want to like this i want to like this because i like the stats on it a lot um, and I like the fact that it has Divine Shield with that stat line a lot. But, I, but you I, know better. But I know better. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, because it's going to see play in Arena, it's a three and a half for me. Yeah, it's a solid three. Proud Defender is the next card we're going to cover. It's a four mana, two six, neutral minion with Taunt that reads, has plus two attack while you have no other minions. So if it's the only minion you play because you play Priest, and this is not a battle cry, by the way, and you just want to resurrect the same damned taunting thing over and over again so you can annoy your enemy, I mean opponent, I mean, well, he just became your foe, then play this card. It's pretty good. Honestly, it's pretty good. I'm going to slot it into a lot of decks. I know that, I know that people are going to undervalue it. I know that a lot of other really, really good Hearthstone players are going to say it's almost good enough. I think it is good enough in a lot of decks, and I think it will see some play, and I think you're going to be mad every time it sees play. So people, so, people have been comparing this to Tar Creeper, and I don't think it's a fair assessment because Tar Creeper, unless it's silenced, is always a 3-5 for your opponent. This is not always going to be a 3-5 for your opponent. And in order to make it a 2-6 for you all the time, you're going to have to sacrifice to do that. Um, or you're going to have to make a choice whether or not you want it to be a 2-5 or 2-6 or you just want to do the thing that you want to do. Um, again, so it's another one of those cards that we talked about where good decision-making is going to get rewarded. And players mm -hmm. that are able to think out you know, multiple turns in advance and, and make educated guesses about what their opponents are going to do and kind of make uh, game plans around all of these variables are going to get rewarded for that. Players like you, X, they're going to get rewarded for that. The average player is going to get frustrated with this card because it's going to be too limiting to their decision making. 
um, I think, um, or limiting to their deck design or limiting to, to, to how they can play their decks. So I don't, I think that you're going to see this more at higher levels and less at lower levels. Uh, mm-hmm. But that, that said, that's irrelevant to the strength of the card, um, but it does make a, a, a difference in how I'm going to rate it. Um, do you want to go first? Or do you want me to go first? Yeah, I got this. I got this a solid four and a half. There's a place for it. Not a lot of places, but there's some place for it. Yeah, I put it at a four, and, and I put it at a four largely because I think the the fact that it's going to be very limiting for for some players um, is going to. It's still going to be playable. It's still going to be put in in, in decks. It's going to see more play, I think, at higher levels and lower. But I think its its limiting factor is going to be the fact that people are going to have to. They're going to worry too much about trying to get that plus two off instead of just letting it be a thing like well like, what's the other one the omega uh defender. the omega defender is it the yep, omega defender, omega defender or... and then there's also belligerent gnome which yeah. is as a similar there, there's effect. too many there's, there's too many cards like that where people are afraid to just play them when they should play them and they mm-hmm. want to try to get that extra value well this is one of those cards where where you know being able to make that determination um is going to be beneficial so what makes this what makes this good though mm-hmm. what um is that it doesn't say battle cry yes so it it's will just a change. constant state of being. Yep, yeah. it will. It will change. It will go to two. It will be four when you when you have when you meet the requirement, and it will be two when you don't. This is one of those cards that I was talking about with that silence minion we were just talking about. Yep. Uh, this is a uh, four mana five six. That stat line is crazy, guys. Elemental, uh, called Soldier of Fortune, and it reads: Whenever this minion attacks, give your opponent. A coin. Now, this is a card we can spend just a minute on because how powerful is giving your opponent a coin? And I think the thing I want to say real quick before you give a much more detailed and astute answer is the short answer is it depends on the meta. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. Booty Bay Bookie. Have you ever heard of this card? Yes. You were... Off, oh. So off the top of my head, I don't have it exactly correct, but if I remember, it is a two mana three three. Give your opponent a coin. It is a two mana three three. Yeah. Yep. Give your opponent a coin, and it's still not good enough to see play. Mm-hmm. If you attack with this and give your opponent a coin, and they survive, you did it wrong. It's a good card. It's a good card. Great statted. It's got a it's got a good tag to it too. The good tribal tag. Um, it doesn't always need to be silenced because we've seen we've seen other cards that have drawbacks on them with big attack. We, uh, we think about Bitter Tide Hydra. That's a five mm-hmm. mana eight eight that you take three damage every time it takes damage. Um, and this compares disfavorably with that, so it's worse than Bitter Tide Hydra. Dragon so Hoarder. Dex- Dragon Hoarder. Uh, what four dragon mana, Hoarder? Four mana f- uh, five six dragon. When it dies, give your opponent oh. two coins. Yeah, exactly. And that's yeah, that's a four mana five six, and you hoarding dragon. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, hoarding dragon. Yeah, and the same stat line. I think hoarding dragon is better because dragon tag and death rattle. Because death rattle is harder to satisfy. Well, the but the but the so I would argue the hoarding, hoarding dragon is worse because especially like in arena, um, it just dies to dragon slayer instantly. On curve. Oh yeah, in, in arenas, it's way worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, I don't know. I don't. I like. I really don't know where to put this card because yeah. if if a silence, if self silence is a thing, then this will be played in that deck. But that deck will never be good. So this is a four. Like you know what? Screw this. Is just a four. It's a good card. It's a cool card, and it has potential. This is another one of those cards where it, it rewards good decision making. Like, how do you make this card work? And if you decide to play it, okay, do I attack? And if I attack, am I okay with giving him a coin? You know, this is a, this is a card where multiple decisions can be made to really optimize the, the, the strength and the value of this card. And I like that a lot. The fact that a guy like X, who has a brilliant mind for this kind of stuff, is struggling oh, to find... What's that? I said thank you. You're welcome. Uh, who has a brilliant mind to find out ways to make cards work that shouldn't work. Um, struggles to come up with a quick idea for this deck, for this how to work this card into a deck, shows you how clever 
um, and how decision invoking a card like this can be. You know, because the easy answer is, oh yeah, you play it and you silence, or you play it and you taunt it and you never attack with it. But why would you want to play a four mana five six that you're never going to do anything with? So, uh, so to me, it's one of those cards where if you choose to play it, you're playing it with a bunch of decisions to make. The first decision is to put in your deck. The second decision is when to play it. And once you play it, when to attack with it. And I love that because there's, there's a, a reward, a risk reward at every level. And if you're right, there's a big reward. And if you're wrong, there's a big punish because the reward is so big, the punishment must be equal. So I love the card design of this card. Very clever, very refreshing and invigorating. Um, I agree, though, that this is also a four because it's just it's going to see experimentation. It's going to see play. It's going to be seen mostly in the Silence Priest, which is going to be very good, which is sad because I think there's more potential for this card that's not going to get lived up to. Go ahead. Violet Spellsword is our next card. It's a four mana one six that says Battle Cry, gain plus one attack for each spell in your hand. I know you love having extra information when you're playing the game, Azrael. How do you like giving your opponent extra information? What does this What does this actually tell them? It tells them when you have uh, how many spells you have in your hand. Well, I mean, obviously, but what does that information mean to them? How does that affect How does that affect them? Because this is, I think, this is a pretty interesting card. Mm -hmm. We see we've seen similar effect to this on another bad card. There's a three mana three three game plus one health for each spell in your hand, and nobody plays it because it's bad. Mm -hmm. Is this the same level of bad? Because when it, when you have such a big butt on it. And now you're improving the attack, things start to look better. Because there was the Warlock card, there was a 3 mana 1-5 every time you play a minion, game plus 1 attack. Mm -hmm. This seems to be similar, in my mind. Um, thoughts? I think that, that the reward for this card's stat line is another this is another situation where good where decision making can be rewarded or punished. I think that for me, I don't mind telling them that I have three spells in my hand. If I'm going to get a four mana four six on the board, I don't mind that. The problem is, is then you have to make another decision of okay, well now when do I play spells? Because every time you do, that value that you gained goes down. So it's while in paper it seems on paper it seems like a good idea unless you have a lot of spells in your deck, and that's not because you want this thing to have a bunch of attack. It's want it's so that you can still play your spells and still have the attack be worth it, right? Because a four mana one six nobody's going to play that ever. Four mana two six, you're probably still not going to play that, right? It has to be at least a four mana three six for you to even want to consider playing it. Um, four six mean, is the magic number, though. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you want? And but four six is the magic number. Do you want to hold on to three spells the entire time that this is on the board? That's the real downside of this card. It's not the information for me. It's the fact that it limits what I can do and forces me to have to make choices. Because yeah, you can say I can play it. And I'll just draw into another one. But if you don't, you're gimping yourself. Yeah. I think it. I think it finds play in um, in 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 a temple mage because they don't care because they're going to dump their cards quickly. A temple or aggro mage, and I think it finds play in a hybrid, possibly, but more likely a spell damage based hunter. And other outside this, and outside of that, I don't think it sees play. This card is so intriguing to me because I feel like it has really really good potential. Uh, just because like the 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 six health is just. That's incredible. That's incredible four mana. Mm -hmm. However, the fact that it comes with a condition, I'm never four is a magic number, and I'm probably not going to have three spells in my hand on it. You know, when I play this, well, if you have the coin, maybe so half the time you get the coin, which is a little bit of an advantage, but still, you probably want to coin this out on three anyway. So I don't know. It's 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 really. It, I think it's a trap card. Trap card. I think it's a trap card. Two and with, a half with with potential. With with potential. I uh, yeah. I give it a th I gave it a three on mine, but I struggled with it because um, I I remember before uh, before I, I I cleaned my notes up. I I remember scribbling it out and rewriting my score on this multiple times before I settled yeah. on a three. Because it, it, I wanted to to like it more. Because I'm the kind of player. The art is I don't, beautiful. Oh yeah, it is. I'm the kind of player that doesn't mind giving them that kind of information as long as the reward is worth it to me. To me, the limit, the, the factor why I reduced it, like I said, was the fact that it forces me to hold spells that I don't otherwise want to hold. Mm -hmm. That was my biggest thing. Next, we have um, the Eccentric Scribe, a six mana, six four, death rattle, summon four vengeful scrolls, which are just four neutral minions, one one minions. Um, this is kind of a cool card. 
it's kind of a cool card. I can see it's like a neutral. Um, it it's it's like a slightly worse neutral um, uh, Savannah High Main. And and I kind of like it. I kind of think it like gives non hunters a kind of a cool mid range be a mid range minion to fill that kind of awkward five or not five but six seven slot or you know. Um, where where they might be playing two of one other minion or you know I, I don't it if Savannah High Main is good in 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 mid range and aggro hunter without the beast tag and it is then this has potential in neutral or not neutral but in in other mid range and aggro decks so you, I'm actually I'd have to like play with it to find out where it would fit um, but I love the aggressive stat line of the 6-4 and I love the fact that it leaves 4-4 four, four worth of power on with the death rattle and that it is reminiscent of a card that I love which Savannah High made even before I liked Hunter and I didn't like Hunter until Witchwood even before I liked Hunter which which would or um Savannah High main was one of my favorite cards in the entire game um so I really like this card um emotionally I really like this card but I'm gonna have to play with it before I can find somewhere where I'm really comfortable with it I really like the comparison that you drew to Savannah High Main. Like, oh, which by the way is one of my favorite golden cards because High Main, when it's not golden, Beautiful. it looks it looks like Mufasa, but golden it looks like Scar. Yes. So mm. it's it's I mean it's super cool. I don't I don't know if they did it on purpose. It looks dope. Um, but I, I wouldn't have drawn that same comparison. I wouldn't even have thought of it. I just looked at it and I was like, this is just a bad card. Uh, with that comparison in mind, however, it forces a it forces a reevaluation. I. I'd raise this all the way up from like the two I was gonna say to like a three. I know that's not a huge jump, but it's still not a good card. I have this as a five <laughs> because I'm positive. I'm optimistically hopeful about it, and I'm probably because I am such a big fan of the Savannah Jaime, probably overvaluing uh, valuing it. But I mean, I look at cards like um, look at cards like Bone Mirror or Bone Drake. Bone Drake mm-hmm. was a was a six mana six five that put a card in your hand. Right, this leaves something on the board, so you you have a way to respond immediately. Yeah, it's not a dragon, but it's something on the board. And if you're playing buff cards, if you're playing you know decks where you can kill your guys off to draw cards or you know get other benefits, or you're playing like a zoo lock or a zoo deck or something like that, it leaves something on the board that you can interact with. And to me, that is very intriguing to have in a neutral card. Um, yeah. And like I said, if it's good in 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 in, in hunter. Chances are it has at least potential in other classes. So I'm, I'm, that's why I'm a five on it. I, I, I think that it has some potential to be good. Next card we, next card we have is Violet Warden, continuing a strange, strange streak of the seven health taunt minions. So Violet Warden is the six mana four seven taunt that has spell damage plus one. I, I don't know why they put the spell damage on there. I guess they were just like, they were bored one day and they were sitting over top of the, all the cards they made and on a construction paper and cut them out. And then they made some confetti or took it out of the shredder and dumped the bag on the table where all the cards were. And wherever the confetti la- laid, there was spell damage. Three landed on that one mage card, uh, you know, and one landed on this Violet Warden. It originally didn't have it. And that's how this card got spell damage. True story, by the way. I didn't just make it up. I'm lying. So... <laughs> overall this is just a card you know i'm not i'm never going to play it in anything that's not a starliner deck and i'm not going to play a starliner deck that's good because it's either going to be oppressive or bad uh, i had not much to say about it i think except the, for the the you gave it a four okay the mana is 100 percent appropriate but the difference yeah. between a, a five and a six is huge um i I like the fact that they're getting more liberal with giving spell damage to things because there wasn't enough good spell damage options. And if they want things like spell damage hunter or um, mid range, or not mid range, or, or tempo or aggro mage to be a thing, they needed more spell damage. Mm-hmm. This is going to see play in those decks um, because people are scared and they like to play taunts. That's true. Like 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 uh, the vast majority of of no, you're not wrong. The vast majority of Hearthstone players um, tend to play scared, right? They trade, they overtrade. Um, mm-hmm. um, they're afraid to tap when they should tap, 
And and this isn't an insult on people. It's just it's it's a threshold of comfort like you have to get over. Right. And I was that way for a long time. It took me a long time to get comfortable tapping to, you know, seven health uh, or or, you know, um, not playing a taunt or not trading or sometimes making that gamble with. Yeah, if I'm wrong, I might lose. But if I'm right, I win the game. Right. Some people people Mm -hmm. will err on the side of caution and it takes a certain amount of, of like discipline and experience to get past that in a lot of cases. So I say that not as an insult, but just as a recognition of behavior. Right. So people will play this in their in their deck that it doesn't belong in, like their spell hunters, uh, or their excuse me, their spell damage hunters and their um, and their mid range and and aggro, um, or their tempo and their aggro mages, because it has the spell damage on it, but more because it's a taunt with spell damage on it because they want to mm-hmm. feel safe because they're going aggro and it, and they want to protect their face, right? And so this is going to see play because of that. Um, I think it's 100% appropriately statted because if it was a five mana four seven with taunt, it would be a better version of of um, the rock, uh, whichever whatever that was, um, uh, because it has the spell damage on there. The spell damage plus one spell damage is probably worth more than one mana, so it's actually kind of undercosted. But that six mana cost is awkward. It's still going to see play. I think it's because of what the things I said. It's actually a four out of six. I think it's going to see. A, uh, I think it's going to see the play, and it'll, it'll be a decent card in arena. It, oh, it's definitely a good arena card. Yeah, it yeah, looks so. like it just looks like an arena card for me. I, I I agree with your assessment completely. People people do play scared. People will put this card in their deck and they will lose games because they drew this card instead of a good card. Yep. So that's why I'm giving it a four out of six. Four out of six. Yep. I know twice is twice is what twice what you gave it, but I just I, I can see that card a being played a lot in <laughs> arena and b I, I people are people are scared of cats <laughs> so. Uh, I like this card a lot. This card I saw getting played in the um, in the reveal um, stream, and this card is interesting. It's a six mana four five mech named Safeguard with Taunt and Death Rattle. Summon a zero five Vault Safe with Taunt. So it's essentially a ten uh, a, a four ten for six mana over two bodies with a death rattle that synergizes with things that bring back death rattle minions. Um, like nine lives? Yes. Yes. Um, this this card makes Mech Hunter a little bit intriguing. I don't know if it's going to be good, but this card makes me want to experiment with it. And that's what they were playing in their, in their demo. Um, and I don't know. This card plus the other six mana card, the 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 mechanical dragon one, um, cards like these two cards make that deck seem interesting. And but I just think if the six mana cost is awkward but fair, but because it's awkward, it makes this card a little worse than it should be or it could be. Um, if this was a five mana four or five, it would be almost busted. Um, yeah, it would be good. It yeah, would be real good. It, it would be almost busted. Um, so this is really awkward because it feels appropriate, but we all know that appropriate is bad and it needs to be a little more busted. So I'm actually higher on this card. Um, I, I'm a five on this card. I think this card's going to see a lot of play and a lot of experimentation. And in Arena, this is going to be a, a, a good card. This is an Arena monster and a standard trap. Three out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have fun playing with it, you jerk. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love watching you try to win a game with that card in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so Heroic Innkeeper is the next card that I'm going to that I'm gonna read aloud and then we're going to talk about. Azrael's going to say some logical things and I'm going to say some horribly emotional things about. <laughs> it's an 8-mana 4-4 that says Taunt. Battle Cry. Gain plus 2, plus 2 for each other friendly minion. How many minions need to be on the board for this to be okay? For it to be okay? Two. So you think an eight mana eight eight taunt with no other, no other text on it is good? It's good enough. Good? No. Do I think it's good okay? Enough. I think it's okay. Oh, it it needs to be three for it to be like something I really want to play. But okay. I I could play it with two on the board and be okay with it. I don't like it, but I could be okay with it. If I'm slamming down an eight eight with taunt and I got two other minions on the board, I feel okay with that. I'm not happy about it. It's not going to win me the game per se, but it's a nice threat. I don't feel terrible about it. And this is going to be good in Arena, by the way. 
Oh, this is this is a nutty, another nutty arena card. I'm just a, like so. I'm comparing it side by side with Lich King in my dome piece right now. I played a lot of Lich King, a lot of Lich King, and oftentimes, I would rather play a six mana card and tap with even lock than play Lich King. A lot of times, I would rather play a four mana card and a two mana card than coin out a Lich King. Like. And Lich King's great. I'm using it as an example because it is a great card. It gives immediate effect on the board. It's an 8-8 taunt, mm -hmm. and the cards that it gives you are just insane. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, you'll roll something that's not anti-magic shell, but then, you know, the next 20 games in a row, you get the anti-magic shell and just win the game. So it's it's a good, it's a good strong card, but not particularly for the stat line because it costs 8 mana. Like, when I see 8 mana cards, they have to do something immediately for me. That's this doesn't do anything immediately for me. That's and for that reason, I have to say, I don't like it. That's 100% fair. Um, I like it a lot in Arena. Um, I don't think it's good enough to make a constructed list. It just, it's just not. I mean, the best case scenario is it's like a bigger, scarier version of Frost Wolf Warlord. But I would mm. rather just play that. Because <laughs> it's going to be more consistent. Um, outside of Arena, this card isn't going to see play. Um there are going to be scenarios where people are going to try to cheat it out or whatever, but it's going to be more trouble than it's worth. There are better things that, that you can play. Uh, I give it a three and a half because it's going to be an arena monster. Yeah. Um, like I say with a lot of cards, instead of playing this, play a good card instead. Give me two. Fair enough. Uh, <clears throat> um, next, we have what I think is an interesting card, which is the Burly Shovel Fist, a nine mana, nine, nine with Rush. This card is intriguing. Yes, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a pretty strong card in Arena because it's going to do something on the board right away. It's like a neutral minion pyroblast. But I actually think that there are going to be, there are going to be decks in, in standard where this, that abuses, yes. yes, that where this gets, this gets all kinds of play. It's going to happen. I can't envision it right now because we've been streaming for 11 hours and I, my brain is starting to, to, to melt. But I remember when I was doing my 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 notes, um, I put exclamation points and smiley faces next to this because just in the same way that cards like um, um, what was that Yeti? You remember that Yeti? That ten? Show it, yeah, the, no, the ten ten, the ten ten for ten uh, Yeti that couldn't attack face but had rush or charge or something on it. Yes, I do. Ice. Yes. Ice Hell. Yes, Ice Hell. Just like cards like that saw play in like Control Warrior, this card will see play in, in decks, and there are going to be ways that this thing gets cheated out. And even if it doesn't get cheated out, okay, so on turn 9, I kill the thing that you played on turn 8 that has 8 health, and I've got a 9 attack minion on the board that you have to deal with. Even if you have to spend 1 mana to ping it, or 2 mana to ping it uh, with your hero power, that's still two ways that I basically made you kind of screw up your turn because you wasted your, your turn eight and now your turn nine or your turn 10 just became your turn eight or your turn seven. Um, so it can be a very disruptive card, even if you don't find ways to cheat it out and abuse it. It's a very intriguing card and I, I'm very optimistic on it and I'm going to rate it a little higher than I probably would otherwise just for its potential. Maybe I'm being overly yeah. optimistic, but yeah. I have hopes. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. There's there's going to be someone who finds out a way to abuse it, and it is a card that is good to abuse. So we've been talking about there are better abusable cards. Well, this is one of those better abusable cards. Um, however, in a vacuum, it's it's trash. Yes. It is just trash in a vacuum. Yes. Yes. If no other cards existed, I'm never playing this one. Yeah. Um, it's only going to see play when it when it's being abused, and even then I think it's going to be niche and not even that good of a deck hit me with it hit me with it hit me with a high positivity number my number on this one is a three yeah the three that is a very very high number it's a three. i'll meet you there three um yeah and that's even though i think it's going to be a good card in arena it's going to be awkward to pick this in arena a lot um so it'll be viable in arena but because of its it's kind of awkward cost i don't think it's going to get i don't think it's going to be your first choice when you're in the buckets that you're going to find it in um and I think it's going to be it's powerful or its potential for abuse in standard. It's just not going to it's not going to work in the vast majority of decks. Um, next, we have 
uh, another card that I like, which is a three mana, three four spell war jeweler. Battle cry, your hero can't be targeted by spells or hero powers until your next turn. I like this card a lot. I like this card That's a lot. Super- What's that? I was going to say, yes, yeah, super cool card. Yeah. Great ability. I let it immediately brings to mind the Cobalt Monk. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's and it's just three mana, three, four. This is this is going to see play yep. in a lot of things. And yep. you're going to hate it when you play when you play against it in Shrivala, yep. OTK, Paladin. Yep. It's your third timeout. <laughs> yep. Um, it's a it's a more limited one, but that's fair. It lasts for one turn and it's got a decent body attached to it. Um, it's going to be great in arena. It's going to be it's going to be in niche decks in in standard. Or I should be it should be I should say it's going to be a tech card or see play as a niche card in decks. Um, you're not going to see two copies of it probably. You're not going to see it in a lot of decks. But the decks you see it in, like you said, in in Shrivala Paladin are going to make you wish this card didn't exist. <laughs> I'm I'm pretty optimistic on this card because of its upside. I, I'm giving it a four. I have a, I have it as a five out of ten. Wow! So you're even higher yeah. than I am. And yeah, I'm no, gonna... I think it's I think it's a good card. It's a solid card. The next one is a portal keeper, though. This is a pretty this these whole all these portal dudes are kind of cool, but that's all uh, they are really. So portal keeper is a four mana five two demon. Yes, <clears throat> you heard that correctly. I did say five two. If you let me start that over in case you understood it about as well as I did, it's a four mana five two. Battle cry, shuffle three portals into your deck. When drawn, summon a two two demon with rush. So not only is it bad, but it also has a bad battle cry to go along with it. So at least it's thematic with itself. <laughs> How do you I, feel? I want to like this card because it's a really cool design. But yeah. summoning some two twos with rush, I mean, it would be cool if you summoned all three of them at once, but summoning them one at a time at random. It's not going to do anything. It's it's basically you're summoning a, a, a slightly better ping at random, uh, but you're also paying four mana for a five two, that does nothing other than just. But you can mana. plot twist with it as you can plot twist. Yeah, I'll get right on that. Um, I want to like this card because it's a fun design, but this card's not going to see anything other than experimental play. This is a two and a half for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at, I'm at it too. I'm right there. Yeah. We like the easy ones, guys. It's nice to have some easy ones. <laughs> um, this is another one of those. Remember that science card we were talking about? Remember that yeah. science card we were talking about? Oh, yeah. Uh, three mana, five, six, An- Arcane Watcher with the text can't attack unless you have spell damage. Well, we've already discussed that spell damage is more prevalent in this set than in most we've seen. And we've also discussed the fact that there's quite a there's a few kind of cool silence effects that have been added. Um, silence Priest is going to like this card a lot. It's a three mana, five, six. Um, anybody that has any chance at all of playing any spell damage has to consider this card at some point, right? Oh, yeah. Um, this is going to see play in Priest. This is going to see play in some at least experimental forms in um, Spell Damage Hunter. This is going to see play probably about halfway between the two, between Science Priest and Spell Damage Hunter, about halfway between the two in mid-range, er, in aggro and tempo mage. I think I think we can also see it in Rogue. Why do you ask? Because Rogue likes playing Blood Mage Thalnos. Oh, I think, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. I was too busy thinking about the new stuff. <laughs> yeah. Call, Alex. Well, we, the deck doctor. You, you were just like pushing the rogue out of your mind, and I don't blame you mm-hmm. because they already do everything else well. Why not <laughs> one more cool card that they can abuse? Right. Fuck, oh, man. I mean, what it's you- a good card. Like, it, it actually is a good card. I think this is the best, the best sort of hey, silence me type of card that they've ever printed. Um, I'm super high on this card, actually. I think it's it because it's going to find use in so many places, because it's so well done, because you can also just give it taunt and let it chill if you somehow do not have your spell damage then i mean god this is a five for me man this is a five for me x what's better a four mana four mm-hmm. eight that can't attack a mm-hmm. two mana four five that can't attack or a three mana five six that can't attack so four mana four eight is worse than the three mana five six so we're talking about a two mana four five or a three mana five six um, it depends. It depends on what you pair with it. In a vacuum, I'd go with the three mana five six, just because it has the 
most worth it stat line. And the interesting thing is this is actually the easiest thing to activate without silence. Yeah. So this is just hands down better than any of the comparable cards. Mm -hmm. And it's cheaper. And it fits in a lot more decks because it can be activated without silencing it. This is a this is a bonkers card. This card's gonna see a oh, lot of experimentation. No. This card is gonna see a lot of experimentation. Okay. I, I'm right there with you. I almost put this higher, but I, 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 I reined myself in and I put it at a five, but I really wanted to go higher. But this yeah. card's gonna see a lot of experimentation. And it's, it's basically be Dionysus. Going. Yeah. It's basically Dionysus if he got into tentacles. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, that, we're going to skip the break um, because we're just going to we got we got about twenty cards to go. We're just going to hammer through them, right? Next card, boom! All right. Recurring villain is a five mana three six. It reads death rattle. This minion has four more attack. We'll resummon it. This fits immediately. Well, um, excuse me, doesn't fit. This immediately brings to mind some sort of buff paladin deck. But then when you look at the the buffs available, it's like why would you spend it on this when you can spend it on a good card? Not only that, but in order to activate this, you need to play it in your deck, and we've already discussed. <clears throat> Playing cards like this in your deck is wrong. So, yeah, not good. This only works in in Buff Paladin and in um, decks that allow you to easily give plus one attack to your stuff. It's and, like but even five that, mana six. Yeah, but it's a, it, <laughs> yeah. That, I would much rather have a five. I think I'd rather have a five mana four five or a five mana four four even. Yes, just because I want that four attack. I don't know. I just. It's too much work to make it work, and the kind of deck that you want to play this in doesn't want to do the things that you need to do to get this to work, right? You want to play this in a, a, a mid-range or a tempo or an aggro deck, not something that's going to waste card space with buffs. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, th filler. This, yeah, th this this would work if if um, if fungal was still a, a prevalent card. Oh, true. Sure. That would be pretty good with fungal Mancer. Yeah, but since it's not, um, would you give it? I gave it a two. Oh, I was a little higher than that because it's going to see some experimentation, um, and and there are decks that it will work in. Um, I gave it a three, but it's it's you know base, two and a three. The difference between that is you know a coat of paint basically. Uh, the next one we have yeah. is, is a four mana three eight mech. Interesting stat line for the mana cost. Taunt, battle cry. Your opponent summons a minion from their deck. One of taunt. I would say taunt, battle cry, counterplay. Continue. <laughs> One of the most interesting and exciting cards. If we see a lot of combo or a lot of OTK BS, this card becomes a two two of in most mid range and control decks. Mm -hmm. Think dirty rat. Think what was the other one? The two man or the. Two mana, the three mana, two, eight. Oh, Death Lord? Death Lord, yes. Um, this card is very good for disrupting combo, especially decks that are like like the priest decks that run few few minions, right? Um, so you, you play this, you, you get some things on board, you play this, and you plan on trading into whatever it is if it's scary, right? really really cool card that allows you to be proactive in messing up the bs stuff that makes us all want to delete our our game i like it just for the fact that it exists and it's, and it's a, a way to proactively counter or at least try to counter bs combo and otk stuff so for that reason alone i am very high on this card yeah this, this will see play. yeah this will see play absolutely this is a strong card. This is legitimately just a good card. Yeah. This this is this will be a seven out of ten if if OTK decks are as dominant as we think they are. They're gonna be this this card will be everywhere. So I'm I'm a six and a half out on this card easily. Yeah, it's it's six for me. The next card we have is uh is called Sun River Warm Warmage. Mm -hmm. I love this yeah. card art, by the way. Yeah, it, it it looks awesome. It looks absolutely amazing. But Sun River Warmage is a five mana four four and it reads battle cry if you're holding a spell that costs five or more deal four damage this is reminiscent of uh crap it, hog rider the the five mana five six if your opponent has a has a taunt gain charge like that sort of that sort of effect is what it feels it has that feel to me and uh flame a uh, fire elemental 
um, um, Darkwing Corruptor, um, mm -hmm. the Dragon, uh, the seven four deal seven damage to a minion. This reminds me of all of those. Yeah, absolutely. Anything anything that jumps on the board, leaves a body, deals some damage, and makes you love your life, it seems pretty decent. This but, one is going to see some niche play. No, I don't no, think this is going to see more than niche play. Read the card text oh. again. I did battle cry. If you're holding a spell that costs five or more, deal four damage. It's a five mana four four. That can go face. Deal four damage. That can go face. That's going to see. That's going to see play in, in in aggro decks. That's going to see some play. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's going to be more than niche play because it can go face. I mean, yeah, if, I, think about my brain. <laughs> yeah, that's why I said read it again because it's we've been streaming for eleven hours and you probably I knew you didn't pick up on that. If if um, the uh, night blade is that what it's called the five yeah, mana four four. Yeah, I played night blade. Yeah, if night blade sees play at five mana four four deal three damage, this will see play in any mage or any any deck that that wants to go aggro that might have a five it uh this could work in in mid-range shaman for god's sake if they have bloodlust sure. right this this card's gonna see people are gonna find a way to make this work because it's it's four damage to the face for free with a body attached to it or to clear a minion it's versatile yeah it's a pretty cool card i do i would say it's a pretty cool card this is a solid five for me like it was gonna be bad when I, before i knew it went face like yeah Knowing it goes face brought it from a three to a five. That is a huge difference, especially for you because you're very conservative with your numbers. So the the oh. difference for for you to go from a, a three to a four or four to five is like the difference between going from zero to one on mana. I mean, it's a pretty yeah. big it's a pretty <laughs> big jump for you. There's a threshold there because we're now, you went from unplayable at three to playable at four to actually gonna see a good amount of play at five yeah um, gonna see gonna do some stuff <laughs> yeah and, and i i being the overly optimistic guy that i am i actually have this as a six i think this card's gonna see especially because of how limited the card selection is gonna be this is gonna see a lot of play yeah. i have a feeling this is gonna be very 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 popular i hope you're right dude i want to see it I, I know i'm gonna try to make it work and i don't even like decks like this but that's just too cool to not try yeah i know so we're going to follow that up with Mad Summoner, which is just six mana, four, four, battle cry. Fill each player's board with one, one imps. Hey, Demons. we found our jumbo imp activator. Yeah. Wait. You, you know what we just found? We found, uh, we found a better version of, of, um, Irene? Uh, no, a better version of, um, <laughs> of, uh, holy crap, Rafam's scheme. Oh, True. Because I would much rather top deck this on turn six than top deck Rafam's scheme. A, it's it's fills your board with imps, and it has a better body attached to it. And the imps are all demons, so this is an interesting card, I think, because it fills your board with imps. It's a demon itself, so the demon synergy is real. Think of it like a demon version of of um, um, what's the dragon? I'm sorry, my brain stopped working because it's late. The dragon. We're up so late that it's early. Yes. Uh, the, no. The dragon. It's feels, the nine minute lady. Yes. Right? Yes. Oh, um, Onyxia. Oh, Onyxia. Yeah, oh, Onyxia. Uh, it's like that. It's like that, but for demons with the demon synergy. So if you have, if you want to play a deck that's going to be either getting some sort of synergy for demons dying, i.e., your big imp activator or your jumbo <laughs> imp activator, or that's going to get some sort of card draw, or that's going to get some sort of buff mechanic from killing imps or whatever. This is a card that fits really well in that. The interesting part is that you fill you, their board with imps as well. And the part that can be difficult is you punish yourself because you can't play anything else. Right? So you fill your board up with imps and then you can't do anything else. So it's an interesting mechanic. And it's another one of those cards that has some interesting synergies, has some interesting potential forces you to make some 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 choices and there could be penalties where that could could bite you in the rear so i like the card design in this a lot um its viability remains to be seen but again i like the creativity and the choices that it enables um so for that alone i think it's going to see some play and some experimentation uh, i think it's decent in, in arena um and i think it can also block you know it can block things because you can just fill their board up sometimes um but that's more of a niche thing to look at. Um, I think mm -hmm. it's a three and a half. Uh, so, as as Caesar once said, 
This <laughs> is <laughs> a one out of ten. This is so bad, dude. This is so bad. We can like it's so interesting. Like we could be, we could think of a million reasons that we want to play it, but like just honest to God, it's bad. I'm not disagreeing with you <laughs> at all. Tunnel Blaster is probably a little bit better as, as <laughs> at a seven mana three seven taunt, and it reads Death Rite. I'll deal three damage to all minions. It is much better. I this is a decent love card. I love this card. I think this card is yeah. really cool. Yeah, it's very, very cool. It's very, very decent. Also cool card art on this one. Um, is this a card, though, that can see actual constructed play? So not unless it's being abused. It's not a card that you're going to play for seven mana and be happy about. Right. I don't care that it's Hellfiring the board. I'd rather just play Hellfire. But if you don't have it's Hellfire... Well, I'm still not going to play a 7-man 3-7. If I'm, I'm going to just use a different strategy that means I don't need Hellfire. Yeah. Um, this, this is a card you're like, getting in Arena. This is a card you're discovering. And when you discover this yeah, card... Yeah, exactly. When you discover this card, you're like, okay, all right, I can do this. Yeah. Right? That's my thought. Um, no, but, you're on point there, dude. Yeah, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not playing this in Constructed at all. In Arena, you might take this, depending on what the meta looks like. I mean, it's not... Terrible and that ups board clears are hard to come by in arena, so you know, maybe, maybe. Um, what do you give it? I give it a two. I say play good cards instead. Yeah, I'm, I'm I want to be high in this card because I like it a lot. I like the card art, like I said, I'm like emotionally, I want this card to be yeah. good. Realistically, it's it's a two and a half to me. Yeah, I want it to be good as well. Here's yeah. a card, yeah, magic yeah. carpet. Three mana, one six. That stat line, guys. Uh, reads, after you play a one-cost minion, give it plus one attack and rush. Remember that other card we were just talking about? Remember that, remember that, other, remember that other card we were talking about just a second ago? Oh, six yeah. Mana, six mana. Six, yeah, so six mana, you, four, four. Yeah, so if you, like, turn nine, like, you know, you, you play this card, and then you play that card, and then you trade your guys into rush, and then you clear their board, and you, you get a bunch of... Then he only has one 1-1 one, one left, and you have a 4-4. Four, four. And a 1-6. Oh yeah, yeah, and then now your jumbo guy, you can play for basically for free, and so now you've got a 3-3 three, three, and and a 4-4 four, four, and an 8. No, it uh, it's too hard to make work. It, it, you know, it's not gonna, it's not good. It's an eight. Try your best. Send me a clip or a video <laughs> of you making this card work in order to enter a, ra a sweepstake or a raffle, whichever one requires me to do nothing tax wise, <laughs> for a chance to win a million dollars. <laughs> oh, man. Small chance. I, uh, the card, this card seems like it could be a lot of fun, but I mean, outside of like what pairing it with. Unleash the hounds. Oh wait, that's that's not that's not play. That's summon, yeah. and you have you have a better version of that already called Timberwolf. So like, yeah. I, it seems like a card that like people are going to try to put into and could probably put into um, either a token druid or into um, some sort of token demon deck mm -hmm. to try to get some like board control kind of value out of it. You might run as a one of for a, like a tech card and that kind of thing, but yeah, more trouble than it's worth. It's a trap card. Yeah, I'm over here like if Robin Williams didn't voice line this mother, I'm not playing it. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is another two out of ten for me. I'm I'm glad we're in these low yeah. bucket cards. No real thought required. It's bad a, next <laughs> it, for me. It's a three because it's going to see some experimentation and it's going to see it's people are going to try to make it work. I'm going to try to make it work just for fun, but it's a, it's still, it's still below playable. It's a three out of 10 for me. Underbelly use is a seven mana three, five. And after it survives damage, you summon a copy of it. This is interesting because it pairs well with other bad warrior cards. Oh wait, this is a neutral card. It's a warrior card that they put in neutral. It pairs with other bad cards, such as Morale Boost or Warpath or, I don't know, it doesn't pair well with anything because it's 7 mana 3-5 Azrael. I'm trying to be nice and creative and shit, but I just want to give it a 2. Yeah, the the uh, <laughs> the effect on this card makes it seem interesting. And yeah, there's going to be a time when you're going to be able to, like, you're going to get bored, X, it's going to be 3 in the morning, and you're going to be burned down the ladder, and you're going to be like, I'm going to make this card work. And you're going to spend yep. 16 hours without sleep 
to come up with a deck that you're going to make me play and I'm going to win two games out of it. And the two games that I win are going to be really, really fun. But at the end of the day, it's a seven mana three five and it's terrible. This is a one. Yep. This is a one for me. It's going to be, it's, it's such a trap card. I, w- I am so optimistic about it. I actually doubled your score on it. I gave it a two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this card. Is there any hope for this card? Seven uh, mana the erotic f- mount seller? Oh. A seven mana five eight. The erotic exotic mount seller. <laughs> you got me doing it now. Uh, <laughs> Por que no los dos, though? <laughs> whenever you cast a spell, summon a random three cost beast. Is there any hope for this card? Uh, I'm trying. It's cute. Like it's not not like the girl. I mean, like the uh, the design is yeah, cute. Yeah. Like, because it's specifically it's like, a beast, it feels like it's a trap card for people yeah. trying to make hybrid or mid range beast or like spell power beast or spell power hunter to work. Because like, oh look, you can synergize with the fact that you're casting spells and you want beasts. What what deck do you play? A seven mana five eight in that also cares about having three drops. A deck where you summon this randomly from some other effect. Exactly. So this <laughs> is a good discovered, randomly generated. This is not a card that you're ever going to play. Give me, give me a two, and let me move on. This is that's like six twos in a row. I'm I'm just cruising over here. This this is a card that, like you said, has an interesting effect, but I think it's a trap card. I just I, I it's a two. And I'm the guy that wants to experiment with it. I still think it's a two because I don't think I can make it work. <laughs> oh, uh, as a right elemental, five mana, two, seven, and at the start of your turn, gain spell damage plus two. And as you would guess, it does have the elemental tribal tag. Azrael, kick us off for this one, please. This card is nuts if you let it live on the board. Truth. I mean, think about it. It's a two, then a four, then a six, then an eight. This card is a must kill if you're playing anyone that has spell damage. Shaman, Hunter, hell, even Druid. I mean, this card is bonkers. You put this on the board, it's got soft taunt on it. Like People are killing this thing instantly, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you cannot let this live. Uh, if it lives one turn, you're probably okay, but if this lives a second turn, you're you're toast. This, this yep. card is, just for the fact that it's a must kill. I mean, think about it like this. It's a five mana taunt heal. <laughs> Right, because you 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 throw this out there, and that's seven damage you're not taking. And probably more than that, because they're gonna have to trade on turn five. They're gonna have to trade probably three or even four things into it. You're killing their board. You're absorbing damage, and if they don't kill it, you're gonna get so much. I, I'm really high on this card. If you can't, yeah. tell. I don't want to say too much more. Go ahead and throw anything out, else out there that you want to say about it. Yeah, no. So, so the Ezra Elemental is a great design card. I'm loving, I'm loving seeing all these elementals. Elementals have been one of my favorite tribes. However, elementals were always in a rough spot because they never had any sort of win condition. They had a bunch of solid minions that did a lot of solid things, but no way ever to close out a game. This brings us closer to that idea of elementals being able to close out a game. We are losing a bunch of good elemental stuff that came with Journey from Journey to Angoro. However, with the amount of elementals that we're seeing in here, and specifically. The arcane elemental, the two mana, two, three, no text elemental, it it leads me to believe that there is going to be more elemental synergy printed, which will make this card good. It never sees play without decent elemental synergy, but can function as an alternate win count, or at least the burst you need to finish out a game from the mid-range deck. Overall, myself, I'm giving that a five out of ten, which is pretty high for a five mana two seven, because you know how I value that stat line. Yeah, that's that's really high coming from you. Um, and appropriately, I'm a little bit higher than you on this one. I'm giving it a six and a half because I think it's going to see a lot of experimentation in play. And like I said, when people realize that just throwing this on the board is going to scare that. Remember how we talked about people are scared? They're scared players. You throw this on the board, yep. people are going to lose their mind. They're going to make st- Stupid trades and stupid plays because they're going to go. Oh my god, that's terrifying! Even if you, even this if you're bluffing, live. even if you're bluffing, even if you have a single spell in your deck, you throw this out there at rank five. Even people are going to be like, oh my god, uh, oh, duh, throw everything at it. It's going. I'm telling you right now, so, it's going to be great. And if you play, so you remember, if you play in something like 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 priest, I mean, if nothing else, you mm-hmm. play and you top two turvy and you hit him in the face for seven. Anyway, go on. <laughs> oh, oh no. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. You're good. I can hear you. I can hear you. 
No, sir. It's cutting cutting in and out right now. Okay, I okay. think everyone woke up and started. Okay, we're good. Cool. Yeah, we're good. Anything else? You good? Yeah, probably. Six and a half out of ten, and uh, you rated it a five. Anything else you want to say? I rated it a five. Uh, nothing more than I want to say. Yeah, no. I think I think you covered it. Cool. Uh, Gomi, we are very much still live. Uh, next, we have another kind of interesting card. Four mana, three three, Hench Clan Hag, Battle Cry, Summon two one one Amalgams with all minion types. I know you hate the stat line, but what do you think about the card overall? So, I'm not sold on a bunch of one one Amalgams. The only reason Nightmare Amalgam was any good is because it was a three four. So the Amalgam doesn't really do anything to me. If I wanted to have some sort of synergistic tag, I would just play a good minion with that tag on it instead of playing a four mana three three with a couple of one ones on the side of it. Like it has no immediate impact on the board. The opponent is playing real cards, then this card doesn't survive. Neither do any of the one ones. And you just lost the four mana you played in. And they also get to play more because you play this on turn four, their board will value trade into it. It is a trash card. It is a trap card. It is a beautiful card that I can't wait to experiment with. But like real talk, it's bad, dude. It's a decent arena card. Um, <laughs> People are going to try to make it work probably in zoo lock. Um, and it's not going to work because Kaliseth doesn't exist anymore. And there's just not, and, and, and fungal mancer doesn't exist anymore. Um, yeah. Um, Where does it compare to explodinator? Uh, worse than explodinator. Cause explodinator I think is fits better on curve personally. And, yeah, it, and and it does more with the damage that the bombies the bombies do. You're gonna get more value out of those bombs exploding at two each than you are at the one ones because they're just gonna die before they do anything at all. Um, so I, because it's gonna be semi viable in arena, I give this card a three. This is a three. Yeah. Uh, this card is interesting. We saw one of these earlier. This is clearly a better version of it, in my opinion. For one extra mana, you get a six mana, five six portal over fiend. Battlecry shuffle three portals into your deck when drawn summon a two two demon with rush. It's also a demon itself. So the last one we saw was a five mana five or four mana five two. So for two more mm -hmm. mana, you get three more plus four. Four. You get four health. You get plus four health. Mm -hmm. Worth. It's still, like, about, it's still a better card. It's still a better card. Oh, way better. Yeah, way this, better. Is, this is actually a playable card. I think this Nearly is nearly playable card. I, I would say this is playable in a demon deck because you're getting more demons. And if you had demon synergy, this is playable. I would play this, but I would not play this over the um, infernals. Yeah. But but I would I could play this in in a demon deck just because you're going to get uh, in this case you're going to get um, 11, 12 worth of of demon stats for six mana. And mm -hmm. and they're free. I assume the portals work the same way that these cards normally would, which is you summon a two two demon with rush and then you draw another card. So I actually I actually think this one is just good enough to be playable. Because if it was a six mana six six, you'd play this. Yeah, six mana six six I play it. A six mana five six, I'm like, please dog just a little more. It is right there on that cusp for me. It is right there on that cusp. It's probably it's honestly it's probably really good in something I can't imagine at the moment. I play I would play this in any deck that has demon synergy, so, and I and I don't blame you. I think I think it might be good. I think it might be good enough. But I get I give this card a five. I don't and have half. the vision. Oh, you give it a five and a half. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. I'm at the three and a half mark for this card. Three and a half, four. Three yep. and a half. I'll call it a four. I'll call I, it a four. I give it, and also part of that is the same reason why I gave the. Um, it's it's kind of similar to the um, the portal. The portal, the 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 scroll keeper, the six mm -hmm. mana four six that summons four guys. Yeah, they're not on the board, but stat wise and power wise, it's roughly equivalent. It's roughly equivalent, yeah. and and sometimes drawing them from your deck can be good in case they have you know multiple board clues or something like that. So, I'm I'm optimistic about the potential of this card. I don't think it's I think it's going to see play. And in arena, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good card in arena. So, uh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little high on this card. I could be wrong. So the next card we're going to go over is a 6-mana 5-6 Unseen Saboteur. It reads, Battle Cry, your opponent casts a spell from their hand. Tar 
targets chosen ram- randomly. So we just talked about a card with the six mana five six stat line. At six mana, I want to see six six unless the card it has a legitimate, uh, legitimately powerful effect. So what this does is this acts as a large disruption spell, and I like the way that they statted and costed it because it's good enough to be able to prevent some of the more uh, punishing combos, but doesn't allow aggro decks to use the card, which is important because then aggro decks would just literally never lose to combo if they had access to a disruption card this strong and they're already favored for the most part anyway. I think that this is a this is a freaking well designed card. Hey, we're gonna get we're gonna hit him with that golf clap. We hit him with that golf clap. No, this we're not we're not crediting XR for this. <laughs> I'm so mad at him. This was designed by ben, when Bent Brode was still in charge. Okay. This shit was in development for like a year and a half. Okay, all right. <laughs> um, I love. Love, 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 love this card. Um, it is yeah. disruptive. It's not. It's not a card that's going to be in the meta all the time. It's only going to be in the meta when, um, when super spell heavy oppressive decks like uh, combo priest decks or OTK decks of any kind that rely on spells are going to exist, or if the the deck the meta is just inundated with, um, like spell mages or, or spell hunters or um, spell damage hunters because the fact is that this card if you play it on a naked board it has a 33% chance to hit this thing thereby negating it it has a 33% chance to hit you when the, they don't want it to hit you which is still kind of a win because it's going to hit you eventually you might as well do it when when you want it not when they want it and it has a 33% chance to throw it at their own face which I'll take those odds any day. A 66% chance to make something that's going to do damage to me not do damage to me, and half of that chance is to make it do damage to your face. I think it's a brilliant card. I think it's a a really, really, really strong card. I think this card is going to see a lot of play. I think it's going to see a lot of play. I think this this card's a six and a half. I was just going to say exactly six and a half. This is and if and if it's if it's that kind of oppressive spell heavy meta that we're afraid of, it might be a seven and a half. It's a good card. Next we have. Batterhead. <laughs> an with T's and- or D's? <laughs> with T's. B-A-T-T-E-R. Head. A 8 mana 312 with Rush. After this minion kills... After this attacks and kills a minion, it may attack again. What are your thoughts on this card? I asked I asked for the distinction in the letters because it's bad. It is actually bad. I know it says bat, but it is bad. <laughs> it, will, it will be... People will try to abuse it in some sort of control warrior most likely because it does have a very abusable looking body and stat line however it also needs to kill the minion it attacks and on turn eight when you can play it naturally it's not gonna do that unless you've already softened the board up and there is just better cards to abuse its attack is way too low for its cost and the time it's going to be on the board it just doesn't do enough no matter it's a trap wall priest it's a trap. This is gonna see. This is gonna see experimentation in Wall Priest. I'm not saying it's good. This is, this will get experimented with in Wall Priest. Um, this will have some potential in Arena, um, mm-hmm. but outside of that, it's not gonna. It's just, just like the Mosh Og Bouncer. It, it'll see. It, it'll see play in a few specific scenarios, and it will be good in those, or at least potentially good in those few specific scenarios. Um, but. Um, outside of that, it's not going to see a lot of play. It's it, it's a three and a half, because yeah, it's a three because because of the potential for Wall Priest. It, um, and if I'm right about Wall Priest, this card becomes like a seven. But I hope I'm not. Uh, Don't be right. Don't <laughs> ever be right, Raz. <laughs> this oh, card, big bag Archmage, Archmage or Archmage, either one. Tomato, tomato. Okay. Yep. Tomato, potato, as we discussed before. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. Big, big Bad Archmage is a tongue twister for those who are sleep deprived and is also a 10 mana 6 6 that reads at the cost or at the end of your turn, summon a random 6 cost minion. So you're telling me for the low, low cost of 10 mana, I can play a bad 6 6 that summons another bad 6 6. Are you kidding me? This is only good if you've got it randomly on accident somehow, and even then you wish you would have got a good card instead. Like, I'm not, I know. This is only good when you hit it when it gets hit from Spiteful Summoner, but Spiteful Summoners and Wild, I can't think of a, you, this, no. This is easier to pull off 
than the mage counterpart that we were talking about that we hated. True, just as not much. wrong. It's literally easier to pull off. We didn't like that, and this is an easier version of it, with at least half of it being a guaranteed six six acceptable minion. Mm-hmm. No, no. Um, this is like it's a trap card, so you can play. Oh, I'm gonna throw this in with my Cadgar deck. <laughs> no, no, it's it's not good there. This maybe an arena, maybe. Yeah, I have- hope you. I hope if you're playing this, whoever is listening, I hope if you're playing Big Bad Archmage, Big Bad Archmage, you queue into me because I I will take all the free wins I can get. Yeah, um, it's just <laughs> maybe an arena. Even then, I'm not sure. Um, in constructed, if you're playing this or you want to play this, go play Mage. It'll be more consistent in in the in the Mage deck with the Mage spells. Um, this but, literally has bad in the title. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's just not. That's just not good. What do you give it? I can throw two at it. I've been throwing two at a lot of bad cards lately. I give this a one because it's a worse version of the mage combo. So I just don't think it's he's playing. I don't. I don't even think it's he's playing. I want like I want it because it's kind of a cool idea, but I don't. I don't. What do you? What are you taking this over? Like in the arena, nothing. <laughs> I I'd take it over. Millhouse Mana Storm? Snow Flipper Penguin? I don't know. Yeah, this No, I think it still took the Snow Flipper. Anyway. Whirlwind Tempest is a card that I know you were excited about. Did you want to talk about this one? Have at it. Okay, so Whirlwind Tempest is an 8 mana 6-6 six, six elemental that reads your minions with Wind Fury have Mega Wind Fury. So for those of, for those of the uninitiated, uh, Mega Wind Fury is you get to attack twice in one turn, same minion, given that it survives. And Mega Wind Fury is you can attack up to four times, given that it survives. So it's Wind Fury for your Wind Fury. And if you can't remember all that, just look at the card. The art explains it all. He's got four knives. <laughs> <laughs> four knives, four attacks. Thoughts? Yeah, I do have thoughts. I wish it was good, but it's never going to be good. And if it is good, everyone's going to hate Hearthstone. So Blizzard will never make this usable. Um, I will have a lot of fun playing with this deck trying to mm-hmm. make this deck work i will make it work just enough times to make me keep trying to make it work <laughs> um and and refine it um before ultimately realizing that just like you said this card can never work can more consistently than 40 percent of the time or mm-hmm. everybody will be playing it and the game will break and everybody will quit um fun du- fun card tempting card trap card i love it i hate it it's a three and a half yeah, I wouldn't even go that far, dude. This is a two. Come the on. Why, the only reason why I'm giving it a three and a half is because it does have a little bit of synergy with um, with the elemental tag in in certain like shaman builds with what shaman has going on, mm-hmm. um, which gives it just a little bit of a push. But it's um, it's only gonna be a three and a half because all those those games that are gonna get played, which would drive up the um, the the score in my book, are gonna be played by me. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, it, it, realistically, it's probably closer to a two and a half. But, you know, a, a boy can dream, right? Yeah. Last five Chef cards, Nomi. guys. We're almost done. Ooh, Chef Nomi. Bad card. Seven mana, six, six. It says, if you play big spell mage, play a better card. I'm sorry. No, that's not what it says. It says, seven, it's a seven mana, six, six. That says, battle cry, if your deck is empty, summon six, uh, summon six, 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 grease fire elementals. No. You? The only way you can make this card work is by basically um, draining all of your cards and not winning along the way and then having this card to play when you didn't plan on this being your win condition. But it's your anti togwaggle technology. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you get this from, if you get this <laughs> randomly from Rafam, okay, cool. If you're playing yeah. this in any other circumstance where you actually have more than 50% of the cards in the meta, net deck of a deck. Yeah. No. It's it's like, what scenario is this good to have? Never. Yeah. Not if once, you're pl- yeah. If ever. you're playing this, you're probably behind, right? Like always. Yeah. So. And you have no cards in your deck. Exactly. You're behind, and then when they, if they have an answer to this, 
they just twisting nether you, you're 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 done. Like you just you're just not good. It's just not good. It it seems good because it's, it's it's you know what, forty two damn it, forty two forty two worth of stats. But you're playing so, at the end of the game with nothing left, and, and chances as, are you've got four hit points left, and they just hit you in the face, and you die. The best example, the 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 best way to explain this card is I want I want you to look deeper into the art. Like, so look at this panda, this chef. What's he holding? What's what's he holding in that plate? Burnt steaks. They're so burnt. What's what's going on behind him? Whoa, whoa, whoa what is that? Uh, his kitchen appears to be on fire. Ah, huh. is he a good chef or a bad chef? Do you think? Hey, hey. Chef Nomi has taught me all the best res- recipes that WoW has ever had. Bad chef it is. <laughs> Two yeah. out of ten. Um, yeah. Three out of ten for me. Three out of ten for me. There's going to be a time when, when this deck wins somebody a game once. But otherwise, yeah. Oh, do I have to look at this card again? Geppetto Buzzkill is an 8 mana 6 6. It says, Battlecry, draw two minions to your deck, set their attack, health, and cost to one. This is like because they wanted to print a card like this, is the entire reason they had to print 16 different cards that do hand and deck disruption. This card is just rife for the abuse. Hmm. This is exactly what it sounds like, and that is oppressive. If this card is ever good at all, if this card is ever okay, it is oppressive and needs to be nerfed and removed from the world. Not the game, not the universe, but just the world, right? Somewhere in between the game and the universe. And if it's, it's just never going to be good. It's like that Mega Wind Fury card. If it is ever good, and people just won't play this game. They'll go play good cards. And the good cards clearly aren't in this game, so they'll go play good cards in a different card game. So I see this, this card being abused. Cards like this are made to be abused. Period. Mm-hmm. They're made to be abused. Like, I see this being played in... Miracle, Miracle, um, Malagos Rogue. Like you, you put Malagos, <laughs> you put Malagos in a deck. You put two copies of 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 Gadgetstan Auctioneer in there. You put this in there. You put a bunch of spells in there, and then you just you just dig until you get this, and then you play your super cheap Malagos, uh, and then you uh, do the thing where you make a bunch of copies of Malagos, and then you just keep you know putting this back in your deck and summoning more of them. You can Mally and Togwaggle scheme in the same turn. That's what I mean. That's, that's what I, I know that's what you mean. And I just... You see what I mean about how disgusting this card is? Dumb! <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you get this 1-1 one, one copy of Malagos that you can play, and then it's a 1 mana, give yourself plus 6 spell attack, and then you just blow up their soul with all of these spells. It's pretty disgusting. And that's just one you're gonna, combo. You're going to do to their house what Chef Nomi did to his. Nice. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Another One other quick example that comes to my mind. Okay, you play this, you pull your King Crush in your Undasta from your deck, and then you kill them off, and then you res them with your uh, with your Revenge of the Wild card, and then you um, send them into their face for a, a, a crap ton of damage. Right? Like, As you keep... You have to stop pretending to be a combo hater. You are a combo lover, and this this exchange just proved it. You need to come out of the combo closet, my friend. Just because I know the ways that this this, or I can think of the ways that this card is going to make my life miserable, doesn't mean I, I'm happy about it. Um, this card, if it is what I think it is, it's going to be. It's going to enable OTK. It's going to enable shenanigans that are oppressive, and therefore it's going to be like a nine out of ten. I'm going to put this at a six because of all the disruption. The disruption is the thing that's going to save this thing, but that well, who's really disrupting who? This everybody's people, being disrupted the, because the people this card playing exists. the peeing, the <laughs> play, the, uh, the people playing the disruptive cards to prevent this card, or this card existing causing people to have to to screw up their own decks to play cards to counter this deck. Everybody this card uses. existing is just disrupting everybody's brain, even if they don't play Hearthstone. Like, its mere existence is making the overall morale of the human race lower. I hate cards like this so much and i'm gonna i'm gonna have to you're gonna click next so we stop crying thank you (laughs) all right here's vargoth guys everybody everybody just like cover your eyes it's gonna get like oddly weird in the chat right now people are loving this card right now for real oh yeah this card is like this is the card that is running rampant right now It, it went live on the servers 
a few hours ago or a day ago. People have been playing it. It's the early released access card, whatever. People have been going nuts with it. It absolutely breaks Priest. Priest is disgusting with this card. It's absolutely yeah. bonkers. People are experimenting with this in all kinds of decks, but I can tell you it is like uh, Papa Jason was was, go, was running this card like all over like top 100 uh, mm -hmm. uh, legend. And he was like, I don't even want to play. He literally said like 10 times, like, I don't even want to play Hearthstone right now. <laughs> like, like it literally is disgusting how bad this card is. Hopefully, it's only disgusting because it's out of context of the larger new meta. Um, but if that card can come in the current meta and be that dominating with as strong as the cards are that are in the new meta, I'm terrified to see what this card will be like in a full set of the new meta. Um, if what I've seen on the ladder so far is any indication, this is a 10 out of 10 card. This is bad card design. This is a classic example of somebody who went to college and their parents know somebody who worked for Wizards of the Coast who had a who had a brother who worked for Blizzard who got this college this college grad hired with no real world experience and said, "Hey, here you go. Here's your first chance. Design a card." And they made this one ass shit. And they didn't check it. Somehow slipped underneath the table because they forgot they hired him. They never actually gave gave him his W two for the previous year, so they couldn't exactly, you know, find him on the books in order to remove this card. I don't know what the hell happened. It had to be something to that effect because there's no way that this is this is ever okay. It's just it's bad card design because it says targets are random. Cast a random spell that you've cast this turn and cast it at a random target. This is bad random after bad random. Get the hell out of here, dude. Like, just no. I don't want this card to be around. If I was more awake, I would have so much emotion to put into you guys right now. X. That was not a double entendre, but... <laughs> X, <laughs> I love X, you. X, my friend, do yourself a favor. Stay away from the ladder until Tuesday. I'm so mad right now, and I haven't even played Hearthstone this week. Stay away from the ladder <laughs> until Tuesday. Your, your head will explode. What do you give this card? Jesus, this is this is like I already said it. I mean it legitimately. Yeah. It, what it is right now is a ten out of ten. I hope that once once the meta changes that it settles into something more like an eight out of ten. I think it is an eight. That's where I think it is, but right now, um the cards that exist in the meta right now make this look just think of all of all of the survivability and regeneration and, and resurrection ability that Priest has, and you'll see why this card is disgusting. I don't want to play the lesser diamond spellstone. So this card, this card is a ten out of ten in the current oh, meta. I hope in the new meta. I hope in the new meta, it's an it settles in an eight out of ten. Card stupid. What's your vote on this card? Uh, stupid. I eight eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How do you really feel? <sighs> Barista Lynchin is a five mana four five that says battle cry. Add a copy of each of your other battle cry minions to your hand. Uh, I neglect. I neglect. Uh, excuse me. I neglected to mention Barisa Lynchin is also a legendary minion, so you can only have one copy of her unless you somehow manage to copy her, and then you can copy her, copying her, and then you have infinite value. How could you do that again? How could you? How could you do that? Uh, oh, you tell um, me. Um, I think Rogue has a very no. easy way of about a dozen cards that they could use to do that. Rogue can't do it. Rogue has no way to do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Lab recruiter. Schemes. Nah. Schemes. Nah. Shadow Those staff. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on. Yeah. No. This card's this card's okay. It's like honestly, it looks very abusable. But I think this is a trap card. I think this is the most powerful trap card that we're going to come across. I think that it's always going to be almost good enough. I think it's like it's scary. But at five mana, it can't do anything aggressive. And at five mana, it just it doesn't fit into anything that's total value. It has to be in a mid range, infinite value deck, such as the Togwaggle Road, yep. and that's the only place it ever goes. Yep, and that's why I think it's going to be a very strong card because it, it, there's a, there's a bunch of Battle Cry cards in that deck. This card synergizes with that deck very well because there are a lot of Battle Cries in that deck, right? And mm -hmm. and this deck this deck is a value card that thrives in a value deck and you're gonna see it in that and probably probably it will see some play in something like um 
people will experiment with it in in like a temple mage or something like that because there's battle cries in that deck as well but it will be yeah, less good it will be. it'll be less good um, exactly i would say people be experimenting with this yeah. in a lot of weird shit because like it honestly be, it's a very endearing card yeah it'll also be good in like i think it'll be okay in like some control your decks as well where you have good battle cries that you just want to get extra copies of like like zola for example you know a deck a deck that's going to use zola to copy things like i don't know otk paladin you know something like that um so it's going to see some play but outside i think it'll see widespread play like we talked about in rogue and then it'll see limited experimentation or or play in decks that have a lot of good opportunity to get value out of the battle cry duplication um, overall i really like the card design i think it's really cool um and I, i'm pretty optimistic on it even though i don't think it will see a lot of play i like the card a lot we'll put it at a six and a half yeah i'm putting i'm putting this one at a five i i do think it's a trap card but mm -hmm. it's still very powerful and that's what makes it a trap because the effect is that powerful so right. the next card we're going to go over is the archivist alisiana um, she is an eight mana seven seven with has have battle cry that says don't uh, hmm, that has a battle cry that reads discover five cards replace your deck with two copies of each this is a great card that slots right in with your homie Mister Rafam oh yeah I love this guy oh yeah this card here's the problem with this card if it fits in that deck you have to play this before you play Rafam. Mm -hmm. Right, so you play Rafam, or, you because it's, or if you get it from Rafam, mm -hmm. but you can't, but you can't play Rafam and have this in your hand because it goes away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I like this card in Rogue though because Myros exists. So you play Myros, you play Myros, you play this, you, and then you put a bunch of copies of this into your deck with all of the other mechanics that that do that. I mean, this this fits into an infinite value Rogue deck for sure. Um, yep. But over, other than that, it's just a great card to win a long game. We're losing a lot of the uh, of the fatigues, um, avoidance cards that we had right now, like with um, like with Archbishop Benedictus, like with um, um, the um, Dead Man's Hand, um, a few other things. Um, so this gives this gives non rogue classes a chance to go longer against rogue. Because rogue yeah. is just going to fatigue people, right? So how do you beat how do you beat them? Well, you play this card, and then you play, you know, this card or some combination of these two cards to give yourself some some staying power against the fatigue, the new fatigue overlords among all of their other talents. Rogue, um, and yes, this also fits into rogue too. But they're never going to draw it because they're going to have sixty cards in their deck at all times, <laughs> and, and they're all going to be better than this one. Yeah, yeah. I, overall, overall though, I love love this card design eight mana seven sevens okay with the effect it's pretty cool i like the card design a lot it's a this very a very very card. yeah it's a very, I'm very cool high. this is an yeah. eight out of ten honestly as this is a great card this is this is a nine out of ten for me this is up yeah there. okay this is this is up there with like the um this is almost the lich king of this set to me almost oh yeah almost Let's just go. a little bit lower but uh, like this is going to see play in almost every deck that's that knows it might go past turn seven and that's it. That's the last one. Guys, we did it. Um, it took us 11 and a half hours. <laughs> but you know what? Honestly, it kind of flew by. You know, my wife's about to be back. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Go, go, <laughs> go take a power nap. Um, guys, for those of you that stuck around, um, I've done long streams before. Axe has done long streams before. Yeah. Um, honestly, this was one of the more fun ones we did. The time flew by. I didn't, you know, didn't even realize really half the time how long it had been um i had a lot yeah, of fun i didn't even realize until four that it was getting late yeah <laughs> we were super thorough we were probably twice as thorough as we needed to be but you know what we just went with it and it was fun and you know we had 40 people that hung out with us consistently for yep. 12 hours so that says we did something right we weren't completely boring so thank you guys so much for being here um, I think we're all going to go play play this puppy here, find our, our snuggle toy, and, and go to sleep. But before we do, briefly want to touch up on the um, the oh, um, the uh, the poll that we put up a few hours ago um, for the Eternal Orbit um, on the Eternal Orbit Twitter, which asked the question: 
Um, with everything we know, which class do you think will dominate the new meta? We, X and I, have talked about that extensively, so we wanted to talk about what your guys' thoughts were. And with the respondents coming back, it's pretty close between the four choices that we picked. We put Rogue, Warlock, Mage, and Hunter up there because we thought those those decks were a rough approximation of what we thought the best decks were going to be. And it turns out that Rogue is the slight winner over the other classes. Rogue got 30% of the vote to Warlock's 20%, to Mage's 25%, to Hunter's 25%. Um, X, any particular thoughts on those findings, or does it sound about right to you? I don't think that they read the Rogue cards. If they didn't vote Rogue, they didn't read the cards yet. Like, they must have voted before we went over those. Yeah, or they just don't understand, (laughs) like, Rogue is going to be our new overlords. So, uh, yeah. Um, I, I think I think they're right. The thirty percent that voted for Rogue and the reason why Rogue won, um, but yeah, Rogue 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 is going to be like sixty percent of the meta for like two weeks. Guys, get used to it, and then it'll settle down a little bit and only be like forty two percent of the meta for the rest of the. The one saving grace, though, Azrael, is that they did not give Rogue any great way to heal and that's something that they've always sucked at so even though they have all these great value cards they still don't have a great way to survive don't prove me wrong right now do you not dare i won't say a word sir I won't okay say, i won't say i thought you were looking over at your monitor like about to pull up some cards and oh, i was no. about to be so upset <laughs> there's 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 healing there's healing remember that remember that one card that we talked about zilliax they can no, have I infinite don't. zilliaxes I don't remember them having infinite zillii, zilliacles, <laughs> zillii on their pogos. I do not remember that. Well, well, they're going to so, have infinite zillii on their pogos. They're going to go face. And then they're going to have that other card, that turtle dove bursty card that also has turtle. divine shield on it. So the army of pogo zillii shield bunnies. <laughs> Tortoises. Yeah, we got this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, so... Real quick, just for those of you that maybe joined us late, a couple things we just wanted to touch on, guys. If you didn't know, um, the first three episodes of The Orbit are now available on the EO YouTube page. Go check them out there. Um, X, what do you got going on? So I'm ready. I'm, excuse me. I'm nearly finished writing an article on deck building, actually. So it's going to cover the basics of deck building. It's going. It's planned to be a five part series, and we're starting with where to start i hope to get that into editing by today however i haven't slept yet and so tomorrow i don't know when tomorrow is though (laughs) so (laughs) to be perfectly fair i'll have it up i'll have it in publishing in order to be there in time for the expansion hopefully by monday is my goal to have it on the site nice be on the lookout for that nice um also guys if you enjoyed this card review or only caught part of it or you want to get some comparison um our, our our fellow eo Eternal Orbit teammate, uh, Mr. Blumplunk, over there on Planet EU, will be having his own um, card review uh, on Monday, this coming Monday, 4 8, starting at 10 a.m. CET, Central European Time. So um, if you guys um, want some more uh, opinions and some comparison uh, takes, on the um, the cards that we discussed today, done in probably half the time that we did it, if not a third, go check out Mr. Blumplunk on Monday at 10 a.m. Central European time. Um, and with that, um, X, is there anything else we want to say before we close things out? I think that's about it, my man. Thank you All very guys. much for having me on. X, thank you for sticking it out with me. Um, tune in next Wednesday when we return back at our normal time at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, where Rude Claws will return once again to be part of the team. Um, And we look forward to having him back. And guys, if you want to hear some more card discussion um, from the Orbit, uh, we're going to have a special uh, edition on Sunday where we discuss these cards all over again, but from an arena-focused standpoint with two special guests that will be joining me this Sunday right here on this channel at 6 p.m. Pacific. Excuse me, 6 p.m. Eastern. Uh, 3 p.m. Pacific. I will see you guys then. X, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, thank you for joining us. Have a great night. Buy the merch. Buy the merch. Goodbye, everyone. Buy the merch.